Cable Guy. Cable Guy? Hey guys, welcome to another sort of old school review. And I wanted to talk about a movie that I think is a very misunderstood film. A film that's very underrated. A film that did not do well when it came out. And even still, even now, in 2022, uh, some people don't look at this movie very fondly. And that is 1996's The Cable Guy. Jim Carrey, Matthew Broderick, The Cable Guy. Okay, I'm going! Take off! The Cable Guy stars Jim Carrey, uh, Matthew Broderick, Jack Black, Leslie Mann, and the movie is directed by Ben Stiller, and this is one of his earliest films, and uh, yeah, we all know Ben Stiller is a very funny director now, you know, with Zoolander, and Tropic Thunder, and stuff. We all know Ben Stiller has great capability and great comedic chops, especially as a director. But in the 90s, people didn't know that, man. People just thought of Ben Stiller as an actor and stuff. And his, uh, his career was going in a weird trajectory and stuff. So when The Cable Guy came out, everyone was excited to see it because of Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey was just, he ruled the 90s with his comedy films. Whether it was like a Dumb and Dumber, Liar Liar, Ace Ventura and stuff. Like, even like more serious roles like The Truman Show, he was just... Everything he was touching was gold. So the cable guy, when it came out, people did not like it. They did not like the tone. They didn't like Jim Carrey painted in a negative way because Jim Carrey is the antagonist. He's usually the hero in the movie. The only time he played a villain was Batman Forever, but that was like a campy role and was still funny and stuff. He was not scary and intimidating like he is in The Cable Guy. It was almost like a borderline psychological thriller, and Jim Carrey is just a psycho in the movie. And people just did not like seeing Jim Carrey in this light. They didn't like seeing him play a character like Chip Douglas. So people did not like it. Critics panned it. It didn't make... Didn't, I don't even know if it did well in the box office. I would have to pull the numbers out, but it did not do very well. Uh, some people even said this is the movie that almost ruined Jim Carrey's career. Luckily, he did Liar Liar after, and he was he's A-OK -okay after that one. But people did not see this movie in a positive light. Even now, the there is more of a cult following for The Cable Guy. Um, more people enjoy it now. More people see the dark side of it, the dark humor in it. And a lot of people like to paint it also as like this, like, psychological thriller but also dark comedy and people really enjoy that uh and i'm one of them actually i uh, believe it or not i was with the people uh back in the 90s because i was a kid when this movie came out i did not like it as a child because i saw jim carrey as ace ventura or i saw him as stanley ipkiss from the mask or i saw him as like lloyd from dumb and dumber and stuff like I always saw Jim Carrey was the funny guy and the hero of the story. So when I saw the cable guy and him being this odd, creepy character with this weird lisp and then just, he got on my nerves and I didn't like seeing him play a villain like most people. But I would say up until now, I literally just watched this movie a couple nights ago and I really enjoy, uh, enjoyed it. Uh, last time I watched it was like maybe 10 years ago on TV. And I watched it and I'm like, yeah, it's, it's okay still. It's not like, it's not my thing, but yeah, it's fine-ish. But when I watched it a couple nights ago, I'm like, this movie's kind of brilliant with, uh, with a lot of its stuff. With its, uh, uh, its satire, with its commentary on television and stuff. And... Even how it talks about this, like, stalker story, it's fascinating, actually. It's funny, but it's also creepy and unsettling and just so weird that I was enjoying a lot of it. And it was quite fun to watch, and I really like Chip Carey in the role as Chip Douglas. Or as we think his name is Chip Douglas. <laughs> so the movie is about 
uh, Matthew Broderick's character, Stephen Kovacs, and uh, he's moved out of his girlfriend's place because he proposed to her and she kicked him out. Pretty harsh. <laughs> and he's installing his new cable in for his new apartment, and that's where Chip Douglas comes in, Jim Carrey's character, and when he installs his cable, they get to talking, and Chip Douglas, Jim Carrey in the movie, automatically thinks there's like something going on between them, like a spark, like a friendship spark, and he thinks they're friends right off the bat, and Matthew Radox wants to be, he wants to be nice, and be like, oh, okay, he doesn't want to blow him off and be a dick, he's like, yeah, yeah, we're buddies and stuff, and that just leads to more and more strange interactions. Chip Douglas shutting his cable off just so he can come and fix it and talk to him. Him just showing up at his door, showing up at his work. He just follows him and stalks him, and it's very uncomfortable. At first, it seems just kind of innocent, like he just doesn't have a friend and stuff. Like even when they go on their first like bro date, he takes them to like the satellites and stuff and talks all about. And he just talks all about uh, the television, the world of television and stuff. And it's interesting. And you feel genuinely sorry for Chip Douglas. The movie also goes into, like, backstories of Chip Douglas and how his mom was never there. And she basically just threw him in front of the television. And the television did all the raising for her. Like, he was raised by television. And he's not even in reality sometimes. Everything he says and does is all got to do with television, like movies on television, TV shows or commercials and stuff. His mind isn't fully in reality. Even when you find out his name, Chip Douglas, is the name of a TV character. And all the names he gives to people are TV characters. And that's what I love about Jim Carrey's character. You never find out what his real name is never find out who he actually is and that makes it more creepy it makes it a little weirder and you don't know what happened to him like there's a lot of theories out there like what went down with his childhood but like so uh they start like you know trying to you know de uh, steven kovacs master Brock's character is trying to like kind of deal with jim carrey you know he's he's weird and he wants to be his friend so he just kind of lets it happen and stuff and there's like oh, oh there's of course the most like iconic scene with the basketball and he shows up <laughs> when he's playing basketball with his friends and that's kind of a funny scene. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta warm up. I don't wanna pull a hammy. There's even, like, a moment in the movie where Steven actually wants Chip Douglas as a friend, maybe. And, like, he's, he's kind of, like, getting him out of his shell and getting him to stop thinking about his ex-girlfriend and stuff. But that all changes when he throws a karaoke party and he gets him to sleep with a hooker. <laughs> it's actually a kind of effed up scene when you really think about it. Because he thinks he meets a girl... And that she likes him, and then he just kind of gets drunk, and he sleeps with her. But Chip Douglas hired her to do all that, to sleep with him, without him knowing. And it's kind of messed up and stuff. <laughs> and then right after that, he doesn't want to be friends with him anymore. But then the obsession grows even farther with Chip Douglas. Because Chip Douglas is like, wait, what? You just want to be my friend anymore? Well, we can't have that. So he basically starts intruding in his life in the worst ways, like... He goes to the girlfriend and tries to be nice with the girlfriend. He even tries to get him fired from his job and put him in jail and stuff for stuff he didn't didn't even do. And Chip Douglas even says, if you don't want to be my friend, you can be my worst enemy. So I'm going to have you pick. Do you want to be my best friend or do you want to be my worst enemy? <laughs> it's so unsettling and so creepy. And most of the third act of the movie is Chip Douglas just ruining the life of uh, this character, Steven, Matthew Braddock's character, and it's fucked up watching it. Kind of funny at times, but it's really fucked up. <laughs> and, yeah, there's, like, a whole scene where he, like, goes to his parents' house. Easily the most uncomfortable scene in the movie, but again, it's kind of funny. <laughs> this is where the healing begins. Come on. 
come on. Robin showed me the birthmark on her left shoulder. It's very sexy. Oh, 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 oh. The hell is wrong with you, man? Thank you for the delightful evening, everyone. I guess I'll be leaving now. I forgive you. I only hope my neurologist will feel the same. Yes, of course, it all leads to like a big climax and stuff when they're on the satellite in the rain and Jim Carrey actually tries to commit suicide because he knows no one ever wants to be his friend. It's very actually, it's heartbreaking. Like clearly he's, there's something wrong with Chip Douglas as a character. Clearly he's mentally not okay. Clearly he's not fully in reality and stuff, but you do feel bad for him because he clearly had a bad childhood. He was clearly probably abused. Maybe even worse things even happened to him. And no one ever showed him kindness or respect. And it's sad watching him. Like, he's a truly broken person. And in the end, when he actually tries to kill himself, it still don't work. Like, he's still alive. He hits the satellite. He just has to go to the hospital and stuff. And even Steven, by the end of the movie, after all the bad things Chip Douglas did to him, he's like, maybe I could still be your friend. But Chip Douglas, he lets him off the hook. He's just like, no, it's all good. And the ending is just, it's funny, but it's creepy. That's why the movie's so good at, at balancing these tones. It's so creepy, and but funny. Like, when he's, Chip Douglas is in, like, this, like, bag, and he's got, he's all bandaged up because he, you know, jumped off and tried to kill himself. There's this uh, medical guy, medical officer, Who's, like, saying to him, you're going to be okay, buddy. And then Chip is like, am I really your buddy? And the guy's like, yeah. And he, like, he just does this, like, this creepy, unsettling smile. <laughs> and that's how the movie ends. And it's funny because you know it's just going to happen all over again. Like, he's just going to, he constantly just goes to new people and gets this unhealthy attachment to them. And just starts all over again. And he ruins their life and stuff. It's... It's fucking crazy, but it's kind of darkly funny at times, too. And, yeah, it, it's it's fascinating, this movie. I don't know why. It's just, like, watching this movie, just, I don't know. I was laughing, also creeped out, but respected it the hell of it. Like, like this is definitely not, like, Ben Stiller's, like, best movie. It's no Tropic Thunder. It's not funny like Tropic Thunder and stuff, but it's damn good. I think it's very underappreciated film. It's, it's the stalker story, but it's not, like, a bad stalker story like we've seen a bajillion fucking times like you know <laughs> it's good it, it's it's a great movie about obsession of television obsession of human beings and it's also about broken people and how like those people those creepy weirdos you see maybe in the comment section on youtube or something how they are as people when you meet them in real life and Sometimes you don't want to meet them. <laughs> uh, I really enjoy The Cable Guy. I think people should give it another chance. Because I know a lot of people, they don't watch The Cable Guy very often and stuff. And most people I talk to, they're like, oh, they haven't seen it in a long time. I'm like, give it a watch. Especially now in our era. Definitely give it a watch. There's so much uh, relevancy in the film. And just it's it really actually holds up a lot. More than ever, too. Like, it's... It's like an underrated gem, really. It's I really I really enjoyed it. Um, it's been a long time since I saw it. Just watching it now, I had to make a video of it because I'm just like, you know, this movie's pretty great. So <laughs> let's talk about the Cable Guy. Underappreciated gem. Let me know in the comment section below your thoughts and opinions on the Cable Guy. And so yeah, let me know in the comment section below. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to this channel and join. The